Greetings fellow Gitalalians, Jeff Weinberger coming at you here with part three of our tutorial on intervals, otherwise known as double stops. This one was Patsy Cline's intro to Walking After Midnight, um, beautiful pedal steel part that I can't remember the name of the player, but uh, one of those Nashville cats from back then in the 50s, um, really beautiful um, part, very distinctive, everyone knows it the minute they hear this part. They say, oh yeah, that's that song, Walking After Midnight by Patsy Cline. So let's look at it and uh, see what kind of intervals we're talking about here. First of all, I want to just break into this with uh, talking about technique. And I was using just finger style. I used my mostly my thumb and my middle finger to pluck those, uh, what we, we can call sixths. So those sixths being uh, stuff like this. That's the interval of a sixth. And I use these two fingers to pluck them. But, you know, you could use pick and fingers. A lot of people that play Telecaster uh, use a pick plus fingers. So you could have uh, gone like that with your uh, your pick and maybe your middle finger. That, that would work just fine. That's a pretty classic kind of country sound if you use pick and fingers. If you use a thumb pick, you know, you could use a thumb pick and fingers like Chet Atkins and Tommy Emanuel and all those guys. So totally up to you how you want to attack this, but I just chose to do it finger style. All right, the very first thing you do is a C6 chord, which is what the pedal steel and lap steel guitar oftentimes is tuned to. So that chord on the regular electric guitar is a little difficult. Let's, uh, let's take a look at it. It's the 12th fret on your G string, the 10th fret on your B string, and the 8th fret on your high E string. Beautiful chord, C6, otherwise known as A minor 7, but we'll talk about that theory stuff later. Um, one of the things to note about this chord is that the notes G and A, the first two notes of the chord, they're a whole step apart, they're a major second apart, so that gives you this nice rub, this nice almost dissonance. Um, when notes are that close together and you hear them at the same time. So that major second, that's kind of unique. And then the other interval in this chord is a third. It's uh, A to C, a minor third. So there you have it, G, A, C, 12th fret, 10th fret, 8th fret. Beautiful chord that the pedal steel guy played. All right, so you have that. Then we slide on up to a sixth, and this sixth is at the 12th fret of our G, and E strings. And I actually arranged this uh, lick so that it falls on the G and E strings almost exclusively. Um, so you don't have to worry about doing six shapes on other strings. It's just your third string and your first string, your G string and your high E string. So we slid up to the 12th fret. Then we go back here to what would be for the C chord. Um, it's third and it's root. And the third is at the third string, ninth fret. The root is at the first string, eighth fret. So like I was saying, all these little sixth intervals are going to be on that same string set. So you don't have to worry about which strings to play. A minor sixth between G and E. Major sixth between E and C. Then we take these minor sixths and do them in parallel. We just slide them around. Starting at the fifth fret, sixth fret, seventh fret, and eighth fret chromatic that's one fret at a time all, all frets in a row chromatic and then we take that shape up again to the 11th and 10th frets so this is an amazing example of parallel harmony of sixths that don't change from major to minor six but just minor six moved around that is a great lick That's the bulk of it. Then he just comes back with a C6 chord as a triplet and then just completes uh, the lick by going that was all on a C chord. That was the 12th fret on those two strings, 9th and 8th frets, 5th and 5th frets, and finally I just I ended it differently than uh, they might on the record. I did a a flat 9 chord and a G9 chord, which are the voicings they used, but um, what I do after that, I just ended on a, a C6 9 chord, which is a 
beautiful chord for country music, rockabilly, western swing. This one is in jazz too. Uh, it's 7788 starting on your D string. D string 7th fret, G string 7th fret, B string 8th fret, and high E string 8th fret. And I do a double bar on that. I bar the 7th fret with my first finger. I bar the 8th fret with my third finger. But there's a lot of other ways to do it, including using four separate fingers to finger that chord. But anyway, how, however you slice it, it's a C6-9. And I do like to take 6-9 chords and do them as artificial harmonics like that, or slap harmonics like that. Just a little thing I like to do. We all have our own style, we all have our own preferences and things that amuse us, and I'm pretty easily amused, so for me, uh, taking a 6-9 chord, any 6-9 chord, slapping it as artificial harmonics, or plucking like this, artificial harmonics, that, uh, that's a nice sound to my ears. But even just playing that 6-9 chord at the end is a great way to end the song if you play this in a band, if you have to perform this song. So just real briefly, the uh, A-flat 9 and the G9. A-flat 9 is X, 11, 10, 11, 11, 11. G9 is X, 10, 9, 10, 10, 10. Barring with the third finger. Not everyone does. Some people play their ninth chords. I have a student that she's very good. She's uh, pretty proficient, but she likes to do her ninth chords with four separate fingers. Uh, the second finger, the first finger, the third finger, and the fourth finger. Only on the inside four strings, leaving out the two E strings. And that's fine. I, uh, I think that's a, a very nice way to know how to do, in addition to my way, which is barring the, uh, the first three strings. <laughs> Funk players tend to do it more like that with the barring. So when you're doing a James Brown song or something like that, you're probably going to be barring your ninth chords. But if you're doing bossa nova or jazz, maybe you're going to be using four separate fingers. So totally up to you. All right, here it is once again. to midnight. All right, next example, and this is part three, by the way, if I didn't mention it, of our series on intervals. I'd like to show you a little Chuck Berry lick. Chuck Berry was really well known for playing double stops on the guitar. It was He was the king of that. He definitely uh, took that further than any other guitarist of his time. There was a guitarist before his time named T-Bone Walker, who was a real showman and was very influential on Chuck Berry, very influential on Jimi Hendrix and lots of guys that came after him. But T-Bone Walker, way back in the 50s, in the early 50s, before Chuck Berry, um, he did a lot of those double stops on the guitar. And Chuck Berry, of course, took it even further. So here's this Chuck Berry lick. This one is from Round and Round. The Rolling Stones did a great cover version of this and continued to do it in concert for many years. So this is in the key of B. Actually, as many Chuck Berry songs are, he liked that key of B. Must have worked for his voice. But here's the lick. How many times have you heard Chuck Berry playing that lick, or Keith Richards, or lots of guitar players? That's like a real famous lick, almost as famous as Johnny B. Good. So, in the key of B, we're just barring at the seventh fret across our first two strings, and that gives us a fourth between the notes F sharp and, and B. It's part of the B chord. It's like the top two notes of the B chord. So that makes sense that we would do that. And Chuck Berry oftentimes slid into that uh, when he was in the key of B. Sounds great when you slide into it too. In this case, we're just stationary. And then we play a third. We play a major third, and that's between the notes E and G sharp. That is at your ninth fret on your G and B strings. So you're going from this fourth at the seventh fret to this third at the ninth fret. We go back to the seventh fret and do a third, a minor third, I'm uh, sorry, a major third, and in this case um, it's going to be between the notes D and F sharp. But then you hammer on 
the um, eighth fret of your G string. So it was the note D and then you turn it into the note D sharp to match that B chord. Very common Chuck Berry uh, double stop lick and lots of other guitar players do that too. Steve Ray Vaughan did it a lot in his, his blues, kind of Texas blues thing. So, see that? Hammering on. Using my second finger to change the note D to the note D sharp. Now we just have one last thing to do and that's hit that first chord again, that first dyad uh, or double stop or interval or whatever you want to call it. We have lots of names for this. And that was the seventh fret on your first two strings. So here's the whole lick. And what's really cool about that is that it's pretty minimal. 